Sometime in the last four million years, the ancestors of Komodo dragons took over the Australian continent as top predators. There they increased in size and subsequently swam from island to island, spreading throughout Southeast Asia, where on a few small islands in Indonesia, they still rule as apex predators to this day. But this takeover of Australia and Southeast Asia was only a recent and relatively minor coup for the larger group of lizards that Komodo dragons and the other monitor lizards belong to. You see, monitor lizards are part of a larger group of lizards called Varanoids. And at one point in time, Varanoid lizards took over the world. Those who explore the chalky marine sediments deposited about 83 million years ago in Kansas, of all places, are all too familiar with finding evidence of this early global Varanoid takeover. Because at this time, the middle of North America was covered by an inland sea called the Western Interior Seaway, and swimming throughout the world's oceans were the Mosasaurs, giant varanoid lizards that had adapted to a marine lifestyle and taken over as top predators across the globe. Of the Mosasaurs, Tylosaurus was the most colossal and fearsome, growing to lengths of up to around 50 feet long. This was the largest lizard that has ever lived and ruler of these savage ancient seas. My name is Brian Ng and I'm a paleo artist, which means I collaborate with scientists to reconstruct what prehistoric animals may have looked like when they were alive. And for the past several months, I've been working with Treebold Paleontology Incorporated to create art for the most comprehensive exhibit on the Western Interior Seaway ever created, Savage Ancient Seas. This traveling exhibit is the culmination of over 30 years of work in the Western Interior Seaway by owner Mike Trebold and his lead paleontologist Anthony Maltese, who I worked closely with to ensure that all of my illustrations were as scientifically informed and up-to-date as possible. The exhibit features everything from tiny invertebrates to bizarre ancient fish and sharks to the rulers of the world's oceans at this time, the Mosasaurs. Naturally, the largest piece of art in this exhibit, a huge mural, had to feature a dramatic reconstruction of the apex predator in this ecology, Tylosaurus. But what should a 50-foot-long marine-adapted varanoid lizard look like? Fortunately for me, reconstructing mosasaurs involves considerably less guesswork than reconstructing most prehistoric animals, in part because their close relatives, the monitor lizards, are still alive today, and also because some fossil specimens preserve traces of their soft tissue anatomy in exquisite detail. This specimen at the Los Angeles Museum of Natural History actually preserves numerous traces of soft tissues, including skin, internal organs, and even the impression of a tail fin. Okay, so it's a pretty slight bend. It's a slight bend. How big is this mosasaur though? Um, 12 meters. Because this is your transverse processes right here, uh -huh. and where they end, which is this your last one, that's where the, the tail bend really starts going. These lizards were so well adapted to a marine environment that in some groups their tails bent down and developed a tail fluke, somewhat like a shark's tail, but upside down with the long trailing fin on the bottom. Now, although the skulls of mosasaurs are remarkably similar to the skulls of modern monitor lizards, mosasaurs' jaws elongated, grew stronger, and their teeth adapted for gripping slippery marine prey. They even developed a second set of teeth on their pterygoid bones. In other words, mosasaurs had a second row of teeth in the roofs of their mouths. Now, unlike monitor lizards, Tylosaurus had one other skull adaptation that's kind of a mystery. Its name means knob lizard, uh -huh. and it's in specific reference to this big prow of yeah. bone in front of the teeth. Reconstructing ancient life isn't just about external appearance, though. Behavior and ecology are important too. 
and although speculative, we can look to modern animals for clues about how their ancient relatives may have lived, in order to make the art depicting them more lifelike and hopefully more thought-provoking. Monitor lizards, as it turns out, are actually quite intelligent, highly social animals. I observed this pair of parent iguanas, a species of Australian monitor, displaying behavior that I can only describe as affectionate. There is some evidence that some monitor species live in groups. But unlike monitors, mosasaurs gave birth to live young. Giving birth to live young has evolved multiple times throughout the family tree of lizards and snakes. And recent research indicates that there may be a correlation between giving birth to live young and more complex social behaviors and group dynamics evolving amongst these lizards and snakes. Some lizard species even form family groups. And others may pair bond for life. All of this leads me to wonder if perhaps intelligence and social complexity were among the attributes that helped mosasaurs take over the world. But not all interactions were cuddly. Pathology here. Um, there's a big gouge that comes through right here. This is a pathology here. You can see these holes here, right here. These, right here, there, this one has 15 different marks on, this, on the top. Damn. So something that bit it around the front of its face right here. And torqued it. Yeah, it's because they're not all just puncture wounds. You yeah, have things like this and this. It, there are rips that are coming through here. Damn. And this is a 42 foot long animal. So there was something out there that was like, hey, I want to mess with that. And there's that, that big slash one right here, too. That's nice. So. You really see where the tooth entered and exited, huh? Mm hmm. Damn. Damn, yo. That had to hurt. Which Mosasaurus species? That's is that it? Mosasaurus. Straight up Mosasaurus. Yeah. Boom. Tooth in the skull. Right yep. by the third eye. And so whether or not it's antagonistic behavior, you know, between between two tylosaurs, or if it's mating behavior or anything else, I'm not certain. Yeah. I don't know how we would be able to show that. Interactions with other animals are also sometimes indicated by the fossil record. Living alongside the mosasaurs, there were huge sharks that got over 20 feet long as well as giant bony fish, such as Xyphactinus, which got over 15 feet long. One find that particularly intrigued Anthony was a large Xyphactinus, with half of it completely missing. Squalicoric shark teeth were found around it, indicating that they had at least scavenged the carcass, but these sharks were only about the same size as the Xyphactinus. And unlike most scavenged Xyphactinus carcasses, the fish was so cleanly halved that it led Anthony to speculate that perhaps the initial killing of the fish was the work of the only animal in that ecosystem capable of ripping a Xyphactinus in half, Tylosaurus. While speculative, illustrating this behavior created the opportunity to show how important apex predators are to maintaining ecologies, both by keeping the populations of numerous species in check and by making food available to the various opportunists and scavengers that benefit directly from their kills. Large marine animals are often accompanied by numerous smaller organisms that either hitch a ride on them directly or save energy by coasting in the low pressure stream that these large animals create as they swim. Modern diving birds often hunt alongside marine predators and sometimes even prey on the fish that accompany them. So I decided to include Hesperornis, a giant flightless diving bird, something like a meter long loon with teeth as well as pteranodons, huge flying reptiles whose bones are found way out in the middle of the seaway, diving in pursuit of these small fish. We also included opportunistic encodus, simulichthys, and squalicorex, scavenging from the kill, and emerging from the depths, a huge protostega turtle. This is a medium-sized one. Whoa, so this thing would be worried about Tylosaurus. And they get bigger. A large marine turtle is an entire ecosystem in its own right, with barnacles and algae growing all over the shell and often accompanied by their own escorts of small fish. 
We see similar aggregations around large marine animals in the modern world, especially when they die or make a kill. And to me, dynamic feeding interactions like this serve as a powerful reminder that everything in an ecology is intimately connected with everything else. The skeletons of all of these amazing prehistoric creatures, dynamically mounted by Treebold Paleontology Incorporated, along with the art that I created, can now be seen in the traveling exhibit, Savage Ancient Seas. I hope you'll stay tuned via social media for updates as to where the exhibit will be hosted and explore it in person when it comes to a city near you. If you'd like to see more of my art, you can do so by visiting my website, don'tmesswithdinosaurs.com. And if you'd like to support my art directly and make more videos like this one possible, you can do so by making a small recurring monthly donation through my Patreon page. Thanks for watching. And remember, even if you live in the middle of a continent, the geology, evolution, and ecology of our planet link us all to savage ancient seas.